Hey, Zach, do you know who this podcast is made possible by? Hey, Stephanie. Isn't it that company called Real Ball Insiders? Real Ball Insiders. Subscribe to the Four Seasons podcast by Real Ball Insiders on iTunes and now Spotify. It'll be the smartest decision you've ever made in your life. Four Seasons Podcast. I'm Ryan Malgosh. Tonight, a later recording on uh, Wednesday, today's Wednesday, with my partner in crime, Zach Noble. Zach, how are we? I am doing well. It's good to be sitting right next to the cardiac Kemba himself. <laughs> just, com- just coming off an intramural game. Ryan dominates. He's got the, the blood flowing. Uh, I'm here <laughs> just excited because my blood's probably flowing even more. I got the wolves First meeting with the Warriors tonight. Big game. Um, Durant's out, so I mean expectations are high for these pups. I mean I don't I don't honestly see a win, but I think a cover is more realistic tonight at least. You do. So what are you expecting tonight? Oh man, I just want to see Butler really shut down Clay. I think if he could shut down Clay, um, I think it's going to open up things for Teague. I think. Um, I think the bigs, I think, are going to have a big game. I think Towns is going to eat on Pachulia. Uh, Wiggins, I don't know. I need, I need, he's been slowing down a little bit the last couple of games. Um, but let's talk about the NBA here. I mean, yeah. we're 10 games in. I mean, it's early. It's definitely looking like a lot of teams are struggling to find their own. But honestly, I have a couple teams that have surprised me and looking up and down. I mean, what about you? Um, yeah, definitely. I think the Magic pop out to me and surprise me the most. I see I'm reading right here. They just beat the Knicks tonight. It's a Wednesday night. So they're 7-4, and four, which is second or third in the Eastern Conference, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, that is very surprising. They are first in the league at three-point shooting. Aaron Gordon is lights out shooting. I don't know what, what he did tonight, but 54, 55% from three. He did not do that last year. That's a, it's taken strides this year. That's been amazing, and I think you had him pretty high in your I most did. Improved he was a play. dark horse for most improved for me. Yeah, I'm glad that, that you remember that. That. That, was, that was a big popular um, projection as well, but, I mean, you did well there. Um, honestly, to me, I really like this Magic squad. I had a lot of promise. I thought Jonathan Simmons was going to be a big addition for them. I, I can't believe they've done so well with no. Al- Alfred Payton yeah. um, because he is very important to that team. And Evan Fournier just keeps taking a leap year after year. He flies under the radar. Nobody's talking about him. Honestly, they're starting to plateau. They probably in their last four or five, um, they've definitely looked a little different than they did their first four and five because I think they were just taking advantage of everybody getting used to their new teams and everybody settling in. Early in the year, that, this is when you see poor teams or non-playoff teams can get off to a hot start like this because – Teams are really getting used to each other, and that's why I'm not as high. Like, I think they're they're definitely looking like they could make a push for that eighth or seventh seed, but I'm not ready to call them eight in yet. No. Um, I forget where I had them. I think it was like 12 or 13, but it wasn't far off the eighth spot. And I really like Frank Vogel, big Frank Vogel guy. Um, outside of them, for me, the two biggest surprises um, I have. You can tell me if I'm crazy or not, but for me, it's the Kings in Dallas being so bad. Um, I really, <laughs> no, seriously, I thought the Kings in Dallas would both compete a lot harder than they would. They both have veterans and really good, young, promising guys as well. And I think they're semi deep, um, both of them. But I don't know, the Kings just have not competed at all. Like Dave Yeager, I mean, where he had that squad going last year, and I really am disappointed how he took Buddy Heald out so early. Um, luckily, the last couple of games, Buddy's just been dominating. He had 21-7 last night. Yeah, Buddy looks good. And you know who's not getting a chance to play? Our boy, Frank Mason. Yeah. I wish he would get some time. Stupid. And it sucks that De'Aaron Fox is obviously there and killing it. He looks pretty impressive. But, I mean, you said it. Buddy and De'Aaron are the, the only two bright spots that the Sacramento Kings have right now. It's not looking good for them. So how long do you think till he gets back in? Because his last three games he's been out of the starting lineup, he's blown up 17 points, 7.3 rebounds, 1.7 steals, 61% from the field, and 64% from three. That's his last three games. Yeah, see, <laughs> I was watching I was watching uh, 
I was stuck watching the Kings last night because it was the last game That's on. That's a stuck. Yeah. That's a stuck. It was the last game on. They were playing Oklahoma City. I had a little prop bet on Russ that I barely lost. What was that? Uh, it was, uh, will Russ score 21 points or more? I think it was 21.5. He had 20 points last night. He looked, he, he was struggling. But uh, I noticed that George Hill wasn't getting that many minutes, and that yeah, excites me. Yeah, that's concerning. It excites me in Frank's case because <laughs> I want Frank to get yeah, minutes. You're all but I Frank. was pulling up right now. He played 24 minutes last night, George Hill. So uh, as the season goes on, the Kings are 2-8 and eight right now. If these struggles continue, look to have them have their younger guys play more minutes. Just Jaeger experiment with guys. See, plug in one guy in, one guy out. See which rotations are good. And I think... I think Frank just needs his time to shine. I can honestly see, I mean, if it gets halfway through the season and they're looking like what they are now, I can see him trying to get rid of George Hill and Zach Randolph. And well, they just got them. I, I know, but they're not, I mean, they haven't even really played Vince Carter. <laughs> they really haven't. Yeah, Vince played only 14 minutes last night. I think the signing of Vince is a locker room presence. Right. And which is good for those young guys. They have four rookies on the team. And Vince Carter, Zebo, and George Hill are just there to show them the ropes and maybe gradually get these rookies to transfer as sophomores a little bit more smoothly. I don't think Dave Yeager has anything to worry about, but honestly, one guy who I never thought would be on the hot seat is Rick Carlisle. I think mm. his day, because he's not developing these guys like I thought he would. And like, honestly, I'm almost calling for Rick's head pretty soon here. Well, you know what a big part of that is, I think, is Dirk struggles. Dirk looks bad yes, this year. He's, and he's, and he's, he's been so just loyal to them. He's been... he's. A living legend. And they're honoring him kind of like they did Kobe. The Lakers did Kobe yeah. for the past couple of years. Just sign him to a two-year deal and just let his farewell tours continue. But this is rough. Like, they're <laughs> being so loyal to Dirk and starting him, forcing him. They're giving him minutes. Like, yeah. How many, and like, it's not good. It's not. I don't have it right up in front of me. But So, Nerlens and Harrison Barnes, I thought they'd take a bigger leap. What are your thoughts there? Um, Nerlens. I'm, I'm agreeing with you there. I had high hopes for him. He was wanting a max contract this offseason. And he looks like garbage. Yeah. He, I was watching them. I'll actually say I got stuck watching Dallas also. Uh, and he has frying pans for hands. He yeah. can't catch the ball. He can't move his feet and catch the ball at the same time. That's really concerning to me. I know he's always been tagged as a defensive player, and he is a good rim protector. But other than that, I thought he would at least be able to throw the ball into him and throw some lobs to him. But he can't finish lobs. He can't catch the ball. <laughs> it's really painful to watch. No, I'm with you. I've definitely noticed that as well. Um Along with those two teams, I have the Wizards really, I mean, for being that good, um, I think thought they'd be off to a hotter start. They didn't have too many new additions. Uh, the teams I'm surprised with are the Nets, Lakers, and Suns. They're all off to solid starts, playing a lot better than I thought they would. A um, couple, couple stats I want to point out early in the year. Um, the Greek Freak, through his first 10 games, he's off to the 10th best start ever from uh, basketball references all around projected stats. Pretty amazing there. Um, Want to give a shout out to Devin Booker, who's the fourth youngest player to score three thousand. Um, can you name those other two? Melo, KD, LeBron. Did you see my? No, my I'm just a wizard. Okay. <laughs> and what do you think about all the Devin Booker slander? Because here's the thing: last year he did get a lot of slander because he wasn't that efficient, but his win shears are way up. His PER and box plus minus are all up from last year. To be honest, I like watching good teams, and I, know. I don't catch a lot of Phoenix Suns games. Come on, man. Uh, Booker, I know last year, was getting hounded for not being a good defender, and I know he's taken strides in that. I've watched Phoenix a couple times. Not studied them in depth and not having something to put my eye on while I watch him, but I do notice and I do hear that Booker is take, taking strides defensively. All right, and before we get into our major topics, Kyle Kuzma also is the third fastest or it's third most score as a rookie uh, for the Lakers history at 154 points through 10 games, um, only behind Magic and uh, James Edwards, which is pretty outstanding. So since we're on the trend of talking about these ass teams, why don't we talk about a trade that happened? Let's get the ass out of the way. <laughs> Move that ass. So uh, Eric Bledsoe got traded from the ass Suns. Now, I'm not saying Milwaukee's ass too, but they are below 500. I don't expect them to be there long. But the Eric Bledsoe trade was Greg Monroe from the Milwaukee Bucks and a protected 2018 first round and second round pick. The Phoenix Suns with this trade have a chance to get 
three first round picks next year. Yeah, those protections are really something. Yeah, it's interesting. They have Miami's first round pick, which is top seven protected. They have Milwaukee's, which I just read, and their own, which is probably a top five pick. That is why Phoenix made this trade. Greg Monroe is $17 million, which kind of sucks. And they don't need big depth. They have Tyson Chandler. They have Alex Lynn. They have Marquise Chris. But why they made this trade was because of the draft pick. Speaking from the Bucks side, they're keeping Brogdon, who we all thought was going to be included in the trade. They're keeping Thon Maker, who we all thought was going to be included in the trade. And they even kept Middleton. And I think that's a huge win for them. Oh, huge. Keeping those three and losing a $17.8 million contract off their books. Yeah, that was the biggest dump. And some people like Greg Monroe as an off-the-bench scorer. Um, Their bigs are very, very, I don't know, minuscule now. Not much. I mean, they have Thon Maker, and I'm not not too sure. I'm not not a big Thon guy, and I'll be the first to admit it. What about Henson? How do you feel about Henson? Honestly, he's a good bench player. I'm <clears throat> he's better fit there and he's been more important than Greg Monroe. Here's the thing. This is one of my bigger kind of misses, I'd say. Um, early on, uh, Greg Monroe versus Andre Drummond. I was the guy that was almost leaning out and I wasn't like hands down all about um, Greg Monroe, but I was leaning towards Greg Monroe in, mm-hmm. in those early years. I mean, his averages were a little better. I mean, they were close, but um, Drummond just seemed like a lazy ass to me and I thought I don't Greg think Mon- you're wrong. <laughs> no, but I think thought Greg Monroe had a little higher upside from a defensive side, um, defensive potential. Yeah. Um, so I kind of yeah lost there, but I'm glad the Bucks got rid of him because he was just not a fit. Uh, I hope he lands somewhere. There's like ten teams in this league that I think Greg Monroe can play for. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I here's the thing. I have the Bucks at 47 wins and the fifth seed to start. Um, Gordon Hayward going down. Um, I really think the Bucks with this addition, uh, my take is I think they can be as high as a two or three seed uh, wow. when it's all said and done. Right now, the East is pretty ass uh, outside of the way the Celtics are playing. Uh, but we're going to touch on that in a little bit here because how can you not So touch? you like this trade for Milwaukee better? Love it. Yeah, F- me too. I mean, it's, it's so lopsided and all these trades, most of them have been. Um, honestly, for the Knicks, it hasn't been that lopsided even though... like I have one worry for Bledsoe on the Bucks, He's not a great three-point shooter. Right. They do have good spacing. They have Tony Snell. They have Toledovich. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they can they can shoot. I'm forgetting somebody. Who else can shoot? Brogdon can shoot. Tony Middleton Snell. can shoot. They have people that can space the floor. Right. But Bledsoe needs the ball to be effective. Correct. He's, his main offensive skill set is to dribble off pick and rolls, weasel his way into the lane, and make plays that way. Whether it's finishing at the rim or making plays for somebody else. But they have somebody else on that team like that. I would not use Weasel his way in because he's 6'11 and long as shit. But Giannis needs the ball and has the ball at all times. And as the primary playmaker for the Bucks, Giannis is great. And you I, can see that. I think those oops are going to be nice. I think yeah. there's going to be a lot of oops. Um, I think kicking out to Brogdon uh, when they get Parker back. It's, Tony Snell is... I just, Toledovich hasn't got enough minutes, but um, I, I do think... Bledsoe is going to move at the right pace with Chris Middleton um, and Giannis. I don't think it's like an epic trade by any means, no. but it's definitely a starter for the Bucks. I'm it's excited important. what they can do defensively. Yes. That's where it's I like you right. right. Yes. Right. Uh, they are so long. They're built to guard teams like the Warriors, which I think everybody's striving towards. But even the players they bring off their bench are long and strong. Tony Snell, 3 and D guy. Chris Middleton, 3 and D guy. Bledsoe's not the three guy, but he can D up. Giannis, you're not scoring on Giannis. Henson and Thon are long as shit down low. I'm very excited for this trade defensively. Okay, and so the Bucks right now are the 16th uh, ranked uh, defense. That's got to improve a little bit. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's that's middle of the road, but not terrible. Um, it should help on all ends, but they got to start winning some games, and Giannis has got to start closing them out. Winning games. You know who's won games a lot. Let's get into it. I mean... The Boston Celtics have won a lot of games. Nine in a row. Going on ten in a row right now. They're going to get it. I mean, I was surprised how well they came out tonight. They're only up uh, (laughs) seven right now. But, yeah, I think they close out the Lakers tonight. They were up 24 early. Um, I got the Lakers covering tonight. Um, (laughs) I got them at 13. (laughs) Wow. Yeah, that was pretty nice. I got them before uh, Horford went out for the night. Oh, yeah. That's See, I think... 
because Horford's been their MVP early on, and he really has. I'm glad yeah, that you said that. Thank you. I'm glad we're on the same page there. We usually are. I mean, yeah. we, gotta, we gotta figure out more, yeah. <laughs> more things when we're not. But well, I know you would say that because you hate Kyrie Irving and you love IT. No, let's not go there. No, I. Okay, Kyrie. I've been very impressed how he's changed defensively. It definitely helps that he's being covered up by Rozier and Smart mm. and being in Brad's system. You can't just stop and say, hey, I'm very impressed with Kyrie's defense. No, it's been great. I mean, but he's definitely been covered up in that system. Just like IT's liability on defense didn't matter as much in that system last year because he had great players around him covering him up. If you look um, at his numbers, he's doing wonderful defense. Correct. So here's the thing. With this nine-game winning streak, the Celtics, honestly... Everybody says, oh, they're one of the youngest teams. They are one of the youngest teams, but because you have such great veterans in Al Horford and Kyrie Irving, Aaron Baines, those guys, that's all you need for veterans. Am I right? I'm okay with you considering Kyrie Irving 25 years old a veteran. He's been to places that most 25-year-old players have not. What a lot of people don't understand, he's got way more minutes than a lot of 27 and 28-year-olds. Right. He's playing like deep, IT. deep, deep down in the playoffs Correct. every single year. A lot year. of runs here the last He's made years. bigger shots than... Over 75, 80, 85% of the NBA players that are playing right now. I'm okay with you saying that he's a veteran, even though he's only 25 years old. Cool. So my take on what the Celtics are doing differently this year, um, and it was the two biggest weaknesses last year. Rebounding and defense, and I said it all yes. freaking years. Yes. So last year they were the 26th ranked defensive <laughs> defensive team. Sorry, not defensive, rebounding team. They were the 26th ranked rebounding team. I'm so passionate about this because I'm so happy it's finally been <laughs> cured. Uh, they're ranked fifth in rebounds right now in the league. That's such a jump, and everybody is contributing. Like, Aaron Baines wasn't as good of a rebounder as he is this year. Al Horford has increased his rebounds by three. That's huge. That's yes. huge. I wrote, I wrote this down exactly as you're saying it. Oh, like, my God. Uh, that was one point I had to talk about. Celtics rebounding. It was, that's, that's exactly why... It helps every aspect of the game out. Defensive rebounding helps transition, <clears throat> helps offense. Offensive rebounding, getting second chances to get more points. Uh, per 36 minutes, Dancing Bear, Yabuselli, or Yabusele. You, You're bringing up the Dancing Bear? 12.7 I'm ex- boards in his minutes per 36. Tice, 11.1 He's looking per nice 36. Too. Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. 6. 6.4 and 6.5, respectively. They do a wonderful job on the boards, and they're so long and athletic and uh, multidimensional. And then Baines. I've never seen, outside of Bogut, I've never seen someone that's able to challenge shots at the rim with so much verticality. Just straight <laughs> up in the air. Have you seen him contest shots? He's all of Australia. He Remember just... <laughs> the full he, earth. He just jumps up in the air with his hands straight up, and he never gets fouls called because he's so vertical. He's got that rule down pat. That's wonderful to see. And rim protection is something that they really needed last year. And Horford playing the five last year hurt that. Baines playing the five with Horford kind of stretching the floor at the four. Has Horford, quite honestly, has some defensive player of the year written on him. Kind of. Boom, there it is. I was about to just that's coming <laughs> out of my mouth. Where do you think their defense was ranked last year in the league? Mm. Uh, regular season, I'm going gonna, gonna, gonna to guess it's in the 20s. It was 14 in the regular 14, season. 14, okay. And so I was pretty surprised by that. Yeah. Um, they're number one right now. Yeah, that's They're fantastic. number one defense. And I've never seen young players, young players, rookies and sophomores rarely are this good on defense. It's, it's awesome. incredible how good they are. And a Everybody's lot of that, buying in. A lot of that goes to Brad Stevens. Yes. I mean, if this isn't a coach of the year run, I don't know what is. Um, also, the differences last year... They had a little more assists to the ball movement. People think, oh, IT was a ball stopper and he did his own. No, that's how incredible he was. The assists were there last year. The assists were there. The efficiency, their field goal percentage as a team was up last year. But it's rebounding and defense is why the Celtics are making a run. I guess the reason I laugh at that, I know you like IT. Um, But Kyrie didn't play this way last year. Offensively, he didn't move the ball like he was doing this year last year. And that's what's really impressive to me is the Celtics have a good coach. Kyrie has a good system, and both of those things he didn't have a year ago. It's really cool to see. It's really fun to watch the Celtics team. So a couple reasons why we said Al Horford has been the MVP so far. I mean, it's both ends of the courts. He's their anchor. But when Kyrie is on the court, their offensive rating is 104.8. When he's off the court, it's been 106. You go, when Horford and Kyrie are with and without Jalen Brown, 
those numbers are astronomical. We're looking at a 109 uh, point three when Jalen Brown is on the court. When Jalen Brown is off the court, 83.9. Wow. And then on defense... Can you please call him by his real name, Kawhi Leonard Jr.? Yes, you gave him that. <laughs> That's pretty impressive. I did. And it, it's looking pretty nice so far. He's a monster right now. Um, so the last point of why Al Horford's the MVP, um, holy smokes, uh, Kyrie whipping without Horford... So when Horford's on the court, the offensive rating is 104.7. When he's off, it's 106. Defensive rating, it's 89.3. Wow. 89.3. And the Celtics as a team are 98 right now. But when Horford's off the court, it goes from 89 to 112.7. Let me just give you two tidbits of information. I like information. Al Horford, 47% from three. Stretches the floor very nicely. Hmm. But more importantly... Listen to this. Stay All seated. Ears. Be ready. All ears. Al Horford is the only player in the league to have a positive plus minus in every single game. How about that? Really? Yes. Every that's, single game they play. That's incredible. Thank only you. player. That's a piece of information I didn't have, and that's a piece of information Wild I needed. Stat. So look at this. Right here, Micah Adams pulls up a chart where... If you're going by win shares and a couple other statistics, Jason Tatum might have the best teenager year ever, and that would be above Kobe <laughs> teenager Bryant. Teenager year, that's funny. Teenager year, yes. That's incredible. And he's shooting above 50% from three. He's very polished. Not saying that's going to last. <laughs> but let's let's keep rolling, Celtics. Let's see what you got. Absolutely, yeah. I think they're going to pull it out. Ooh, three-point game. Third oh, quarter. Can they win with Al, <laughs> Al Horford, their MVP? All right, so this last week, we've seen a lot of blow-up games. Harden went off 56 points, 13 assists on 76% from the field, seven for eight from three. I texted my buddy, hey, might want to turn to the Rockets game. Uh, James Harden has 52 points in 15 minutes. And by the way, I alerted Ryan. (laughs) (laughs) And I didn't believe it. And I was like, what in the world? This is actually correct. He's played 15 minutes, has 52 points. LeBron, not to be outdone, 57 points. 11 boards, 7 assists, 3 steals, 2 blocks, 67% from the field, 23 for 34. May I add, this is his 15th NBA season. Yeah, it's incredible. So Uh, my question to you, who is next? Who is next to (laughs) blow up for 50 plus? Who is next? Well, I might go Steph Curry against the Wolves tonight. I wow, against the there Wolves. There we go. Let's go. It's going to be happening tonight. No KD. Unfortunately, unless they put Jimmy Butler on Steph Curry, he doesn't get above 30. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but let's be real. I think it might happen. There's a great chance of it. Um, the Wolves, though, they're not as bad defensively as people are making it sound. Um, and I can dive into that further, but I'm going to save that for another night. Who do we want to touch on first, Harden or LeBron? Um, let's do LeBron. Okay. So, with LeBron, his 57, 11, 6, 3, you said it, but it was off 67%. There was only two threes in there. His efficiency is unreal. It's amazing. Unreal. It's absolutely amazing. So, with LeBron, first of all, he was the youngest player to ever get to 25,000 points. He's the youngest to get to 29,000 points, and that's what he just hit. That's pretty amazing. So, he's not the fastest to hit it, so let's get that straight. He wasn't the fastest. Like... Oscar, Kareem, Michael Jordan, and Will all hit 25 faster. I could, points? Yep, 25,000 points. All those players you just named, that's their best attribute. LeBron's Oscar? best. Oscar? Yeah. Yeah. Oscar, you're, you may be right there. He's yeah. a good passer. But LeBron's best attribute is his passing. Right. So his scoring is like secondary. Yeah. That which could, is incredible. Right. So... Here's the thing about the Cavs. I'm just going to touch on it real quick. The LeBron game is absolutely phenomenal. Cavs are 5-6 right now. Um, I'm not on panic mode. They basically... They haven't lost to a team that was a preseason for sure playoff team. Right, right. Nor a playoff team that was last year. They've been beating all the good teams. And if they beat the Rockets tomorrow, everybody shut the hell up. (laughs) Honestly, there's... It's, they have so many new players that got that don't fit together. So much talent, and sure, Derrick Rose still sucks ass. But everybody else, here's the thing. LeBron and Rose, they went off together. LeBron has 57. Rose had 20 and like four. 
Then it was Crowder as well. Those three had a game together, 17 and seven from Crowder that same night. So it wasn't just LeBron taking over and winning that game, even though he was every, he was everything, sure. But those other two had great games as well. Um, everybody was getting involved. That's why you had 11 assists. Uh, but then after that, Dwayne Wade had his game. He came out and had 23 and six. Then the game after that, you get Kevin Love, who has his most efficient game without shooting a three since like his Minnesota days. He looked retro, um, scoring from all angles except beyond the arc, which was awesome to see. I loved it. It just gave me flashbacks to watching him in my childhood. Um, and JR also showed out. So that's three in a row of having top, they're six guys. So they're coming around. I can feel it. And if they win in Houston tomorrow, shut the hell up. <laughs> you know the thing that Cleveland does where they turn on the switch defensively and they're like, ah, we don't have to play defense through the regular season. But once they get to the playoffs, oh, yeah, let's play defense and let's be a contender and let's go to the NBA Finals. Whoa, do you have numbers for that? No, but I think they, <laughs> do, I think they do that when they're playing to their competition. They see who they just recently lose to. That was garbage. Uh, every team they've lost to is garbage. Yeah, so they see the Six Pacers. Losses. I mean, the Pacers aren't even that bad, 5-7 and seven right now. But, I mean, right. they see a team like the Pacers. Uh, okay, well, tonight's going to be uh, <laughs> just a glide-by. And then that's how they play. But they're on national TV against a good team. We got the Wizards tonight. Let's go off. LeBron, go for 57-11-7. and seven. And he will. He can do right. it. But he's got to maintain health, which is his number one priority, throughout a whole long-ass regular season. And I think that's kind of what we see with the Cavs. Yeah, and so with LeBron, like you said, in that Kevin Love game, he was letting Kevin run the show. LeBron was just coasting, just pacing, yeah. letting him do his work, getting Kevin Love in his spots. And he knows he's got to get these guys going in order for the team to win because he can't bear this whole load. Are you going to ask me who I think's next to score 50 points? Because I'm itching to tell you. Yes, I can't wait. <laughs> um, it's Chris Tapps Porzingis. He's been on a tear. Woo! <laughs> wow! He's next to score 50-plus points. He's, 40's his career high? Uh, he has yeah, 40 so. this season. Yeah, I know. I think that's definitely... Yeah, he went off. He's not only being clutch, but he's... Three of his last five games, he's had 37, 38, and 40. He is, wow. he is the reason why the Knicks are 6-5. and five, uh, When everybody thought they would be 0-11 at this point, pretty much. Um, and have you watched the Chris Tapps game yet? He takes over whenever he wants. 7-3, yeah. can do whatever he wants offensively. His defense is stepped up. But his defense is not what we're talking about here because he's going to be the next one to score for Wow, that's bold. You heard it here first. <laughs> uh, Steph Curry. Yeah, we heard your Chris Steph Curry. Steph. That is bold. I can't wait for 9-3 bold? tonight. Really? Yeah. Why? You think Jimmy's going to be locked down? I mean, down? just for the fact that it's tonight, the very night that we're recording, and they're playing your T-Wolves and you're going, to, you're going uh, Steph Curry cutting thing. their throat. So we got to touch on Harden now. This is so important. This is everything. This is, should be the whole podcast because this is arguably the best offensive game of all time. Most efficient. Yes. No, seriously. Seriously. The numbers don't lie. So to get to this game, after this game, James Harden is averaging 29.5, 9.7, 4, while a true shooting percentage of 61.5. Now let's talk about that game that got him to that position. So... He scored 56, which is a career high for him. I uh, started off, what, 13 for 13? Yeah. Okay, so most 50-point games in Rockets history, six. Next nearest, Hakeem with two. I was guess three other guys. Yeah. Okay, so you go down. He attributed, so he attributed 93 overall points because um, it wasn't just 56 and no. Yeah, like two and three. Yeah. It was not. He had 13 assists. Thank you. That's unbelievable. Where you compare it to... So, Kelly Scaletta, I could just dissect this entire article. I suggest all of you go read it. Like, you see this graph right here of um, the best offensive games of all time. Um, so, effective field goal percentage. Um, this is comparing Will to 100. This is comparing Kobe's 81. And those games were both efficient. But Kobe's 81, he only had like four assists. So he was at like 87 points totally attributed, yeah. where James Harden was at way more than that. Um, and how many minutes was that? I mean, he had like 52 through, what, three quarters? Yeah. Um, and then you go down here, like, here's the top four offensive games. Harden has two of them all time. Like, 
Total TSA, and this is... So Kobe's 81 games, number one? Uh, if you go by this, this is the score he ranks him on. It's 79.08, and that's Wilt Chamberlain. Okay, Wilt's 100 was number yeah, one. Yeah, <laughs> Kobe's game would be fourth, and James would have number two and three offensive games of all time. Last year, um, on New Year's Eve, that 53 point is career high before that. Oh, yeah? Because he had 17 assists. That's yeah. wild. That's He attributed 95, where... Kobe only attributed the 86 points. But, yeah, I could go on and on. But, people, seriously, if you want to know why this game was the most, best offensive game of all time, it's it's in the pudding. Like, <laughs> it's it's seriously there. And, like, Kelly's – it's not just numbers. If you watch him start off 13 for 13, how smooth and efficient. Unbelievable. It just gives me chills just thinking about it. Um, most points in a game with 25 or fewer shots attempts. Michael Jordan, 58 in 1987. James Harden um, with 56, uh, with 25 or sure, uh, less. And I think um, James obviously had a little more, fewer shots because his true shooting percentage was much higher than MJ's as well. So what's next in the docket here? Uh, no Chris Paul in that game, might I add. So <laughs> what, what's that have to do? Uh, the Rockets are balling without Chris Paul. That's all I'm going to say. Oh, man. So you don't, like... I'm not saying. I'm just saying. Oh, you're opening up a can of worms right now. My mind's just spinning. Top five. Top five this week. Players that need more attention. Players that we need to talk about more, that are underappreciated maybe this year. Uh, Players that are balling out of their minds that are kind of on under-the-radar teams or just basically that's why I use the word attention. So let's go one for one. All Who's right. your first? Do you have them ranked or do you have them just scattered? I have them five, um, one to five. I, they're honestly ranked. So number one like, is most important for you? Number one is most important. Okay, let's do, do five do? through one then. Let's do five through one. I'll cool. do the same thing. You start us off. All right. Well, f- since we're doing bottom to top, let me just give a quick shout out to our boy, Fred Van Fleet. The other day, Ooh. Sunday versus Washington. <laughs> I love it. Kyle Lowry gets ejected. Oh, shit. What are the Raptors going to do? No fear. Fred Van Fleet's here. <laughs> he went off for 10, three boards, four assists, two blocks. Fred Van Fleet, who is listed at a generous six foot. He's 5'10", five, 5'11". Five, if that. Two blocks, 71% from the field in 19 minutes. Uh, he had the highest plus minus rating out of any Raptor on the floor, plus 14. Uh, it was just the next man up, and he took full advantage of his opportunity. So I'm, I'm very proud of Fred Van Fleet. And uh, keep balling. I love it. And somebody I didn't have, and I hope all of your guys are guys I don't have, because we want to recognize 10 guys tonight. Right. So my number five is an early six-man-of-the-year candidate. This guy's best year was his rookie year. Ah. And he's coming out of the closet, people, literally. Uh, Wait, Tyrese, <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, yeah, it's your boy Chandler Parsons, actually. No way. No, it's Tyreek Evans. I'm just give, confusing everybody right now. Um, Tyreek Evans is posting career highs in box plus minus, win shares, player efficiency rating, and true shooting percentage. Um, He also leads the Grizzlies in box plus minus and PER, player efficiency. So Memphis with Chandler Parsons and Tyreek Evans both on the court are plus (laughs) plus (laughs) 19.1 points per 100 possessions. With them off, minus 8.7. Hey, you got to play them. Play the guys. Play them. So Fizdale and Dwayne Casey, listen up. We're telling you who to play right now. No, Memphis is deep. I'm very impressed. I had Tyreek Evans on my list too. Oh, okay, sweet. But uh, that's good that you noticed that. Let me uh, let me start with my five because Fred was a shout out. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's great. And plus, you already took my Tyreek, so I won't even bother. All right, there we go. Um, ben Simmons, and yes, a lot of people talk about him, but he needs more. He needs more attention. Really. Tell me more. He's averaging 17.8 points, 10.1 boards, and 8 assists. He's almost averaging a triple-double. He is a rookie. Yeah. It's- so when we talk about him, let's just throw rookie of the year out of the window because no shit. That's a no-brainer. When are we going to start talking about All-Star? Yeah, so he's competing for that All-Star spot. Kyrie Irving and Kemba Walker, you look at their numbers – they're so freaking close, and I'm almost leaning towards Ben Simmons. Yeah, as I mean, am I. Kyrie Irving, oh, I mean, and Kemba, they're both, I mean, they deserve it. They both really deserve it, but Ben Simmons' all-around game, 
Holy shit. And are we talking, because they, if we're talking Ben Simmons as the point guard that he actually is, because he's the main ball handler, he touches the ball every single possession, he brings the ball up. He's a, he's a point guard too. And we got to pick one of those guys to squeak in the all-star game. And right now, you lean in ben, Simmons. ben Simmons is making sure he's not left out of uh, wow. LA, it's, I think. It's going to be year. a battle. Is the all-star game in LA this year? That sounds right. You know, Honestly, that's so. shocking. I don't And know. I hear Ben Simmons loves LA, so there you okay, go. Okay, okay. Um, but Kyle Lowry's definitely, he might not make the G League All-Star game. Um, Kyle Lowry? Kyle Lowry, so that means another spot's open right there. There you go. Who's your uh, number four? My number four is 3 and D. We talked about him earlier, the MVP of the Celtics, and that's not Nikola Jokic. That's not Otto Porter. That's not Joe Ingles, who are the other 3 and D guys. Mm. Um, that It's Al Horford, obviously. Um, people... There's still so many people out there because Kyrie had his first 30-point game are going, oh, he's the MVP. I just gave you all the numbers that you need to know right now. Uh, on top of that, Al Horford is one of these four players that are 3 and D, and here's the stats that make him 3 and D. Above 60 true shooting percentage and averaging three-plus three-point attempts a game. Yeah. And two-plus defensive box plus minuses. 47% from 3-2. All those guys. And... People were slandering Jokic's defensive abilities last year. <laughs> Number three for me. Oh, was your four? Was that Tyreek? Well, technically, yeah. My four was right, Tyreek, cool. so I'll skip to three. I like it. Aaron Gordon, my dark horse most improved player of the year. I think you're picking guys that people are talking I think, about. I think I'm going to give him that nickname every time I say Aaron Gordon. I'm going to mention that he was my dark horse most improved player of the year. It so it's going to get annoying. Be this is just guy. a warning. Yeah, be that guy. Uh, 19.1 points per game. Nine boards a game. And we already mentioned his league leading. Let me say that again. League leading three-point percentage of 56%. That's per how many three-pointers? Um, it's not. I mean, it's not skewed like you think it is. Really? I'll have to pull it up, yeah. Um, but I'll let you pull that up. And on the surprise team in the league, the 6-4 and four Orlando Magic. Right. No, he's a big 7-4. and four. They beat the Knicks tonight. Seven and four, Orlando Magic. Hell of a start, Orlando. Keep it up. Yep. Um, so my number three, you'll never guess this, and I'm so proud I came to this conclusion. My number three is Jeremy Lamb. Wow. He is up for most improved player. He's making a run for that award right this now. This is saying something because you're a big Nick Batum guy. I am. I'm big Nick Batum. So tell him to watch so, his back. <laughs> Jeremy Lamb coming at you here. His rookie year averaged three points. Then he went to 8.5, then 6.3, then 8.8, then last year 9.7, and now he's up to 18.1 on the year. Very good. That's doubling. Yeah. That's like putting all of his years together. That's Just a recipe kidding. That's for most it. improved, to be honest. But that is a recipe. If he can get, I mean, if you can double your average, and he's contributing at a very high clip, very important defensively, um, I'm loving what Jeremy Lamb's doing. I like that. That's very good. And I like that I didn't have that one, so that's good. When I made this list, I had in mind how well their team is doing and how that leads to team success, how their stats lead to team success. That's cool. So shout out to Tobias Harris, great, my number two great guy. Great name. Thank you. Uh, he's the leading scorer on the 7-3 and three Detroit Pistons, second best team in the Eastern Conference. Tell me more. Uh, he's averaging nearly 20 points per game, 19.7 points per game, stroking it at 46% from three. And that's making nearly three threes a game. I think he's at 2.9 threes a game made. So three threes a game, shooting at 46%. Shout out to Spice Harris and the Detroit Pistons. Yeah, he's making an all-star run and a most improved player of the year run. He'll be up for both those. To be honest... I think we're saying that too much. Not everybody in the entire league can win most improved and we'll go to the playoffs and be an all-star. But that's fair. No, yeah, they're all they're all right neck and neck there. All right, so my number two is your trill self, James Johnson. Mm-hmm. People don't talk about this guy enough, and here's why. He brings so much to that team from an impact, from a value standpoint. He does everything. Rebounding, passing, playmaking. James Johnson, he can even stroke the three ball. Defensively, he's there. He's so, an animal on defense. Here's the company in this statistical category. Players with 20-plus assist percentage, 10-plus rebound percentage, 2-plus block percentage, and 2-plus steal percentage. You have Giannis, DeMarcus Cousins, Joel Embiid, 
and yours truly, James Johnson. <laughs> Put some respect on that man's name. That's nice. That's very good. My number one player has been the best player on the Washington Wizards this year. Bradley Beal. Bradley Beal. That's a great one. Um, do you think he took over the spot of best shooting guard um, in the league right now, but not named James Harden because he's playing with a point guard? He's very, if, if right now through 10 games, I know it's really early to put him over Clay. Yeah, I don't know. Clay. I know you're big into ranking guys and lists and stuff. <laughs> I just am I'm appreciating their greatness and watching him play. Right. He's shooting, he's averaging 25.4 points per game, and he's red hot right now. Three of his last four games, uh, 40 points, 36 points, and 38 points. And I wasn't kidding when I said that he's the best Washington Wizards player so far. He is. Uh, John Wall is still an all-star, still a phenomenal point guard. But right now, Bradley Beal is making the most impact on that team. And uh, what's their record right now? I thought they were playing right now. They're one of the teams that are really driving me nuts. The Wizards? Yeah, because they're not winning. Yeah, they're 5-5 five and five right now. And I think a lot of that is due to Wall not playing that well. And the reason that they have squeaked out five games is because of Bradley Beal. So shout out to Bradley Beal. Shout out to Drew Hanlon for getting Bradley Beal to where he is right now. Yes, Drew Hanlon deserves a lot of props for the improvements he's made on players. A lot of players, yeah. Not only him. Oubre from that team is also. Andrew Wiggins. We could go on. But my number one, and basically you might as well call this top five. Put some respect on that man's name. (laughs) My number one, um, basically... They got rid of Jeff Teague for him a few years ago, and a lot of people were questioning it. They decided to roll with this guy because they loved his future. Started his rookie year, three points. Then went to 10, 11, 17.9. Now he's averaging basically 23 at 22.6, and he's nearly averaging seven assists. So let's say 23 and seven. I think I know who you're going to say. Dennis Schroeder. Yep. Uh, It's amazing. Like, he is on... He's the best player on one of the worst teams in the league, and that's what you get if he's your best player. He can't be your best player. Um, he's a plus player defensively as well. Um, but the other guys who are averaging 22-6 and six right now, he, like I said, he's averaging about 23-7 and seven if you round up. Um, LeBron, Harden, Curry, and Lillard. Put Dennis Schroeder in that category. Oh, no. Look at that. He's got to be an all-star this year. Um, if that team wins above 10 games by the All-Star break. No, <laughs> he will not. And plus, we already have Kemba and Kyrie and Ben Simmons as a point guard on that. He's he's going to be battling, man. He's going to be battling. Um, My issue with that is, I mean, who if if not him, somebody has to ball out for the Hawks. Somebody has to ooh. be the maiden ball handler and do something. But look, at he put up those numbers on playoff teams as well, and he's gotten better every year. Uh, he, this is by far his best year. Oh, I think by far. If you were a Hawk, you would put up 20 and 5. You know, <laughs> the 5 might not be there, but like <laughs> 23 point attempts. That might <laughs> there be there. You go. That's my game. All right, Zach. A lot of fun. Top 5 uh, category was one of my favorites that we did so Good. far. Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in again. Um, enjoy the next 10 games coming up here. I uh, can't wait to share our upcoming guests with you and stay blessed.